good morning one and all today we will see how to construct a structural diagram in earlier sessions we have seen the different laws of progression how to derive the different structural formulas today we are going to see how to construct structural diagram we know very well suppose here in the today session we will discuss the construction of structural diagram now let us take the structural formula for number of steps speeds z is equal to 6 now here we can uh, for a z is equal to 6 for a number of speed steps is equal to 6 these speeds we can obtain at the output shaft we can write in multiplication of 2 and 3 i have written here purposefully z is equal to 3 into 2 or you can write 2 into 3 also no problem remember that things but uh, i have taken this example to discuss the some you know the things associated with 3 into 2 and we will discuss during the kinematic gear diagram let us see the structural diagram for z is equal to 6 the what we have to do in multiplication of 2 and 3 as discuss the z is equal to 3 into 2 you can write no problem after writing this what you have to do now where this first you know the term that is 3 you can say it's a p1 then second term this 2 as a p2 and you know very well what do you mean by p1 and p2 the p1 is nothing but a number of speed steps in first stage and number of speed steps in second stage now here in this case the number of speed steps in first stage p1 is equal to 3 so i have written here 2 we can make the correction uh, here it should be the 3 the so what you have to do so you can note down number of that is uh, speed steps number of speed steps in stage 1 is equal to 3 and number of speed steps in stage number 2 is equal to 2 remember these things don't make any confusion that is p1 so that's why i have written p1 is equal to 3 number of speed steps in stage 1 p2 number of speed step in stage 2 that is 2 and you know very well n is the number of stages that is 2 again how to find out for z is equal to 6 maximum structural formula for that purpose this is the standard equation n factorial bracket square that means you can obtain maximum structural formula in fact factorial bracket square remember these things and second one here the i have written p1 is equal to 3 p2 is equal to 2 that is the number of speed step in stage 1 number of speed stage in stage 2 the how to obtain this maximum structural formula for z is equal to 6 by using this formula we can easily obtain so you can do that cal it's okay fine no problem no need to write all the structural formula then how many combination you can obtain in between the p and x now we are is equal to n factorial now we are n means 2 2 factorial so you will get p combination that is 2p and here 2 for x the total p combination is equal to 2 and total x combination is equal to 2 remember these things and this combination are number of speed steps in stage 1 that is p1 and p2 then you can change it p2 and p1 these two combination similarly for the x you can make the combination x1 and x2 none other combination x2 and x1 this combination by using this combination you can easily right different structure formulas that means here by using this four combination you can write four formulas how to write it let us see now first of all 
take the combination of V. So let Z is equal to 3 P1. Let us write P1 and P2. I am going to write. So what is P1? This is 3. Then X1, X2. Then another combination of P, P2, P1. What is P2? 2. So I have written 2 X1, then 3 X2. This is the we have used here P combination. Then another one is about the you can say combination of X here. The here X1 and X2, X1 and X2. This first combination is used here for this P. Now here another one you can write. 3x2, 2x1, 2x2, 3x1. But what do you mean by x1 and x2 and what value we have to substitute? To always substitute the value of x1 is equal to 1. If I am going to substitute here 1 and what is the value of x2? That time this p1 becomes the x2. Remember these things. Take this example. Suppose z is equal to 3x1 and 2x2. And always take x1 is equal to 1. I am going to put here 1. And this uh, p1 that is 3, it becomes here x2. That's why by using this logic, I have written z is equal to x1, 1. And this p1 becomes x2 that is 3. Similarly, you can substitute here x1 is equal to 1. But what is this? This is the p1 now. And it becomes the x2 that is 2. Remember these things. Now, this is formula number 2. Then here also you can do the same logic. How you are going to do it? So you can substitute x is equal to 1. And this value becomes the x2. So that's why I have written 2 here. Remember these things. x1 is equal to 1. And this becomes the p1. And you can see it becomes the 2. That's why here is written. Then x1 is equal to 1. And this value is 3. It becomes the x2. That's why this formula is that means by these combinations, you can obtain easily these four formulas. How many formulas? Four formulas. And for these four formulas, we have to construct the structural diagram. And out of these structural diagrams, we have to again do the optimization of structural diagram and select optimized structural diagram. This is the another, you know, the in another class, we will discuss optimization of structural diagram after constructing it. Before that, today we are going to see how to construct a structural diagram. Out of these four formula, in today's session, we will discuss any one formula to construct structural diagram. Okay, I hope you got it. Let us start to do this. Now, how to construct this structural diagram? Now, your structural diagram is nothing but a special graph and which represents the structural formula. Remember these things. And how to construct it? For that purpose, what we have to do? We have to draw Z number of horizontal lines. What is Z? Z means total speed steps. The total speeds. Now here in this example, Z is equal to 6. The total speeds are 6. And you know very well, how to find out the different speed step that is n1, n2, n3, n4, n6. Total 6, n1 is the minimum, n6 is the maximum. And by using any laws of progression, you can obtain the different speed step or speeds at step 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Z is equal to 6. That is n1, 2 up to n6. You know very well that by using laws of progression. And generally, you know very well, geometric progression is used if it is not mentioned. Then what you have to do, that means you have to draw number of horizontal lines. In this case, Z is equal to 6. We have to construct 6 horizontal lines. Then what is the gap or distance between the two horizontal lines? It is nothing but a log to the base 10 phi. Log to the base 10 phi. Now here, why this log to the base 10 phi is used or logarithmic scale is used? Because you know very well, when you have determined the value of n1, n2, n3, n4, n5, that time it's not a constant in between. That means it is not going to change constantly. But to construct a diagram, to have a constant 
or approximately constant values we have to use a logar logarithmic scale and that's why this phi uh, we have taken this distance between the two horizontal lines is a log to the base 10 phi then next what you have to do we have to construct a vertical lines and vertical lines is nothing but a capital N is a number of stages the vertical lines indicates the number of shafts in machine tool gearbox but here n plus 1 that line vertical lines we have to construct and it shows the total shafts in machine tool gearbox now in our example z is equal to 6 n is the n is equal to 2 that is number of stages 2 the n plus 1 that is 3 the total number of vertical lines is equal to total shaft is equal to 3 and uh, already by the combination we have written here four structural formulae out of that we can take formula number one and for that we are going to construct structural diagram okay let us see how to write now first formula we are going to take z is equal to 3 1 that is p1 x1 p2 x2 for this we are going to construct as discussed on earlier slide so what we have to do we have to draw the horizontal lines how many lines 1 2 3 4 5 6 is equal to number of speed steps n1 to up to 6 z is equal to 6 then we have to construct three vertical lines it shows the number of shafts in machine tool gearbox the year is equal to the n capital n plus 1 number of stages plus 1 is equal to total shaft this is 1 this is second and this is 3 you can say it's a shaft 1 it's a shaft 2 and it's a shaft 3 input intermediate and output then that output shaft you can obtain this difference between it's intermediate and it's input then what is the gap between these two horizontal lines it's equal to log phi this is step number one by using this you can construct z is equal to six six horizontal line then three vertical lines that is capital n plus one that is number of shafts one two and three shafts and gap between these two horizontal lines is equal to log five then next what you have to do now let us proceed now here you will find take the mid of the n1 to the n6 on this diagram so you will find in between the n3 and n4 you will get the midpoint here it's a starting input to the input shafts which comes from the primer or electric motor at this point so first of all we have to look at these points so in this figure i have located look at this cursor this point and it is in between that means the mid of the speed or you can say in in between n3 and n4 you will get this these points and I have draw horizontal line it's a starting speed and this speed we can obtain different speeds at intermediate shafts and different speeds at output shaft that is the, uh, the total z is equal to six speeds that we have to obtain at this output shaft this is shaft number three shaft number two is the intermediate shaft and it's a input shaft and again here this speed or you can say you can obtain by using belt and drive or directly connecting the primer we can take this speed is a input here at shaft one that is input shaft. This is step number one. Again, this is stage number one here in between this shaft one and two. This is stage one and this is stage two. In stage one, so what we have to do? We have to obtain the number of speed steps. You know the three and here number of speed steps two in between second and third and one and two three. Now let us see how to proceed. Once you have located this point in between N3 and N4 at the mid, so now here for this first one P1 and X1, P1 is equal to 3 and X1 is equal to 1. So what we have to do at the starting point, P1 is equal to 3, 3 speeds that is we have to obtain from the input speed up to the intermediate. So what we have to do, we have to construct 3 lines gap of 1, this is X1. Let us see, this is the starting point or this is the point or you can see it's a starting point. From this we are going to construct a line 1. Then this half and this half, this is gap of 1. 
and again this half and this half gap of 1. So what we have to do from starting point or input speed, 3 speeds we can obtain gap of 1, so you will get 3 lines 1, 2 and 3. This P1 is equal to 3, 1, 2, 3 and X1 is equal to 1, gap of 1. After obtaining that means from this single speed input shaft, we can easily obtain these 3 speeds to the output shafts or well, intermediate shaft, not output, intermediate. Then in next stage, so we have to obtain the two speeds gap of three. So what we have to do at these points, we can obtain the two speeds. Again, you have to construct this line and gap of three. So you have to maintain the gap one, two and three. Here you will get one and this is two. Then similarly here gap of two. Again here you will get this speed and this speed. And again here you will get this speed and this speed. So in second stage, we have to obtain the two speeds gap of three. Let us see how to obtain it. So for this first speed obtained at intermediate, so what you have to do? Total speeds two, the two lines that you have to construct. And what is the gap between them? It should be x2, that is three. One, two, three. The two speeds, that means two lines gap of three. Then next, second point, Again, two lines, gap of 3, 1, 2 and 3. And last one from this point, look at this. Two lines or two spades, gap of 3. So this is the final structural diagram. Now looking to this diagram, you can observe by using this speed, uh, this uh, structural diagram, all these lines, all speeds are connected in 1, n2, n3, n4 and n6. It's not like this somewhere the n1 is not or n5 is not connected. All these points are connected. This is number one. Second, there is no overlapping. That overlapping means from these points we have uh, you know the two speeds n6 and n3 and again from these points n6 and n3. Don't do like this. The single speed you can obtain because all these are the n1 to n6 speeds these speeds you will get at the output shaft or you can say number of speed steps to do the operation or machining operation. Remember this thing. So this is the structural diagram for the structural formula that is P1, X1, P2, X2 that is P13, X11, P22, X23. Remember these things. The so once again I will recap how to construct it. The Z is equal to 6 is V1. So you can construct horizontal 6 lines for N1 to N6. Then draw vertical 3 lines for shaft 1, 2 and 3 because there are 3 shafts. Why 3 shafts? Because stages are 2. Capital N is equal to 2. Number of shafts is equal to N plus 1. And gap of log 5. Logarithm is well. This is step 1. Then steps 2. Here in stage 1 and 2 here in intermediate. This is P1 and X1 locate the midpoint and three speeds or three lines for this because in stage one p1 is nothing but a three that means number of speeds three we can obtain in between so we have to construct three lines here one two three gap of one and here two speeds gap of three already we have discussed one earlier side once again to have a recap i am showing these diagrams and in this way you can say it's a structural diagram for the structural formula 3, 1, 2, 3. Remember these things. I hope you got it. And similarly, there are four formulas. Four formulas for this 2, 1, 3, 2. You can construct the by using the same logic and same method. You have to construct other structural diagram also. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any query, you can contact me through this WhatsApp number 989042679 or mail me at pbkushare at kkwag.edu.in. Thank you. Thank you very much.